Hello out there. I am just popping in with a really quick live, or really, I guess, news that you need to know at this point in the school year. So it is May. Yay! But also, how the heck did we get here, right? I, I guess we should have known it was coming. We had Easter. We had spring break. Should have known it was coming, but it's here, and I feel like this month is jam-packed. I am Christine Heideck. I am your leader here on the PTA PTO Superstars Facebook group. Um, and if this is the first time that you're you're joining us for uh, one of the Facebook Lives, just go ahead and type new into um, the comments so that I can greet you. Don't want, just, it's a nice thing to do, right? And that makes it feel more of like a community than I'm just talking to a little dot in my computer, which is currently what I'm doing. <laughs> so um, a couple things I want to tell you about. I kind of have like a really fun announcement. So I did this last year and then it kind of went away for like no good reason, but I wanted to let y'all know that I am reviving the monthly giveaway. Yay! So here's how it's going to work. Uh, it's like really easy. So it's really easy to enter and participate. So what you do is you just head on over to bit.ly slash PTO giveaway and you sign up to enter the giveaway and every month you will have the chance to win a different um, prize or different it's actually going to be one of my products out of my store so um, it's going to change from month to month and it's going to be like whatever I feel like giving away but it's going to be something really good I promise I've never had anybody disappointed um, so it's a good thing. So again, I, I dropped a link in the comments or in the description, I think, of the video. Um, but the URL for that is bit.ly slash PTO giveaway. So, um, and the nice thing about this is that you don't have to sign up every month. So as long as you stay signed up to get my emails, um, which are like one or two a week, maybe, um, you'll still be qualified and entered to win each month. So that's why I say it's super duper easy because you just drop your email address in there one time and then you're good to go. You could be in it to win it or you will be in it to win it. So, um, all right. So today I kind of wanted to jump ahead, spent the last couple weeks talking about staff appreciation stuff, which is great, but um, I'm ready to move on to a new topic. And because yours truly is going to be president at a uh, upper elementary school next year, um, I'm already thinking towards the fall. And I know that might be a little much for some people, uh, but I'm totally looking to next fall already because the best time to plan for the next school year is like before it's a month or two out. Like the best time is actually like right now because everybody's still in school and it's just easier than trying to round everybody up during the summer and get, get people to start thinking about things. So if you can start planting those seeds right now and making plans, not, maybe not firm plans, but like general plans right now, you will be so loving yourself in the fall because you'll have so much of the like work done. So what kind of planning am I talking about? I'm talking about generally thinking about for fundraising, thinking about like your overall calendar like when are you going to have your fundraisers a lot of times you need to book those well in advance to get your preferred delivery date or pickup times uh so don't for sure don't leave that to the fall because then you're going to just be getting whatever's left over and available at that point and it could be not to the best advantage for your group if you do that and your fundraiser might suffer so you don't want to wait till last minute the other thing in the mail is coming, so cue the dog. We're just gonna let him go. So while he's barking, I'll just share with you. Pepper, it's fine. Every day, because our old mailman used to drop dog treats through the door, and the dog thinks that they're gonna, he's gonna get treats. Pepper, come on. Good boy. Good boy. I know. I know. Yeah, let me get the treat. Sit down. That's a good boy. Okay, so this is like every day. <laughs> and the meal comes at a different time, so apologies. You know this is live and unplanned. Come here, buddy. We'll lay down. Um, so, okay, I was talking about fundraising. So then the other thing uh, that you need to start thinking about 
or like family events. And some of this stuff, it all, it all fits together like a giant puzzle. And if you're just trying to like piecemeal it together, your year is going to be a hot mess. It's going to look piecemeal together. It's not going to have a good flow for the people who are running events. Like that's you or the people coming to events or like trying to get the information. It's just going to be way more difficult that so I, I highly suggest you plan all this stuff out so um, as far as family events just start thinking about like what when you want to have things like what in, in the easiest way to figure that out is like you got to figure out first what you want to have and when I'm thinking about the events that I want to have at um, schools I am always looking at like what we did this last year what worked like what really worked? Usually there's a couple standout events that worked for a variety of reasons. And then like consider like, why did those work? Why were those successful? With PTO stuff, to, the way to make it feel fresh and exciting for families is to um, not just be doing the stuff and repeat, like the rinse, or I should say, you know, shampoo and repeat or rinse and repeat, whatever. It's to, to, to be coming up with good ideas and good events that families actually want to come to, fundraisers that they actually want to participate in. You can't just be doing the same thing over and over again. Now, does that mean that your 37-year tradition of carnival needs to come to a screeching halt this year because Christina says just don't rinse and repeat? No, but look at that carnival. Is it still fresh and exciting? Is it still attracting families to come? Is it still attracting community members to come? Are you still getting really good donations from businesses and local vendors who want to support it. If the answer to all of those, is, or and I have one more, do you still have sufficient numbers of volunteers for the carnival? If the answer to all of those is yes, then heck yeah, man, rinse and repeat that baby. That is a good event. But if you're saying no to like more than one or two of those things, I'm thinking it's time to switch something up. Something's just not, it's, it's not fresh and they're not, People just aren't going to respond in the same way to a fresh event. But it doesn't mean that you have to stop having a carnival. You just have to look at it. Maybe you need to swap out a couple games. Um, you know, swap out the activities, swap out the date, swap out the time. Maybe it's a Friday night instead of a Saturday afternoon or vice versa. Uh, just look at how you can do small tweaks to kind of keep the essence of the longstanding tradition um, events intact, but like just Look for a way to freshen them up, like easy little tweaks. We're not talking about a major overhaul at all. The other thing that you need to consider is like, what didn't work? What was a hot mess? Who didn't, who didn't, you know, what event did, um, what event did you have that nobody showed up to? That you were begging and begging and begging volunteers to, to sign up and nobody was responding. Those events are duds and you, Definitely, at a minimum, need to tweak them majorly. Um, yeah, or, or scrap them. I hate to say, if you've got like, if it's nothing but trouble, then it's not really worth it because it's probably a nightmare for you to put on anyway. And I'm saying you personally, or you as your PTO. Okay. So the other thing you need to consider is like, what's going to be changing next year? Are you going to have a new administrator who may or may not? be as supportive or more supportive as the administrator that you have now? Do you have a whole bunch of PTO volunteers moving on to the next school so that they're just not available for you to use? Do you have a whole bunch of parents coming into the school that you think are gonna be prime candidates to be volunteers to help out with? All of those things are like massively important elements for successful events. So you're gonna to wanna to consider those things. Now, if all of this seems like way too much to be keeping track of, I do have a solution for you. And I will refer, refer you to the president's planner um, that's currently in my shop. Now, this is not the only solution. Like you could totally have this dissection of events. Um, you know, after each event is what I, what I highly recommend instead of trying to think back, oh, um, you know, the walk to school in September, you're trying to figure out what worked and what didn't. It's always easier when you're doing it close in time to the event. It's just closer it, to your memory and um, just easier to remember some of the details that really matter. Um, but you certainly, if you don't have anything, if you haven't already done this um, really critical evaluation of the event until now, uh, 
do it now. It's still worthwhile. The other benefit to doing this is that the people who are planning the events next year have something and the years to go um, that follow have something to go off of. So they're not just going to be making up as they go along because they'll sit, they'll see, Oh, you know what? They tried to have that family fitness night on a Wednesday night and last year and nobody came, you know, but three years ago they did it on a Friday night and a lot of people came. So maybe we should think about having it on a Friday night. The, the details like that is really what can make or break an event. So you want to be tracking them and you want to have them um, easy to pass on. And that's kind of why I created the planner because I just saw that this information was getting lost in the shuffle. It really wasn't accessible to the leaders. So I thought, oh, I can, I can change that. Um, so you can access that planner if you don't have it. I know so many of you in the group are already having it, loving it, and 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 yeah, have them set up and ready to go for next year. You can get that at bit.ly slash PTO store. So um, yeah, go check it out and see, see how it will work for your group. Cause I guarantee it'll, it'll bring so much organization and structure to your group. And it also provides a good amount of guidance and gives you tools right at your fingertips that you can use. So you're not wasting time creating the sign up sheet or wondering what information needs to go on a sign-up sheet for it to be effective? The sign-up sheet is done for you. You just have to fill in your information to customize it for your event, copy it so that you have multiple copies of it to, for, for people to sign up on, and you're good to go. So it's got stuff like that. So um, the other thing when you're planning events is that you want to look at um, – or planning events for next year, you want to look at the calendar that that's the school calendar, district calendar that you have so far. So there might be other PTO units in your district that have competing events um, or potentially competing events on the same day that you are interested in planning, you know, a specific event. So um, that's why early early planning is good. The other thing is that you can. Um, if you're planning now and getting your dates on the calendar, then the other people are gonna to have to adjust their schedule to fit what you've already planned because you kind of got there first. I know that kind of, that's kind of how it works in our district. Not always, um, but most of the time that's how it works. So that it can save you the trouble of having to find an alternate date because you're on there first and other people have to work around you, which is fantastic. Um, and the other thing I recommend, kind of in the same line of like getting on the district calendar, is just do that if you have a building permit process that like I know I have to fill out um, building permits anytime I want to use a school facility. Um, so I got to get on that. And I, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and take care of that so the recording secretary doesn't have to do that. But you want to make sure you're getting your dates on the calendar and getting building permits so that you can use the spaces and be assured that you have the space that you want and that you're not going to be relegated to a, a, a space that's really not good just because you didn't get your ducks in the row early enough. So I hope this is all really helpful for you, giving you two action steps before I go. I'm just kind of going to repeat from what I said before. One, if you're not already signed up um, for the giveaway, uh, go ahead and do that. I'm going to be drawing a name um, next Wednesday. Actually, I might, I might yeah, I'll, I'll do it at, um, let's say, we'll put that off the cutoff at midnight next Tuesday. Um, so it's at the 8th. Yeah, so May 8th at midnight is the cutoff. And then I'll draw the names um, from everybody who's entered at bit.ly slash PTO giveaway. And the prize this month is, I'm talking all about the planning events for next year. I've created a whole bunch of event flyer templates. So uh, I'm continuing to create more because I just thought I kept seeing a need where people just didn't have the either the time or the design skills to come up with a flyer that was like graphically pleasing to the eye yet still contained all of the necessary information for an event. So I created some. So like there's a carnival pack and there's a daddy daughter butterfly ball pack, which is so adorable. I don't have a daughter. So I think all things daughter is like super cute. Um, and there's like a fall festival 
pack. There's a movie night template, whole bunch of cute things. So um, I'm going to be giving away one of those. I just need to maybe decide. I'm going to look at what I have and, and see which one I feel like um, giving away because I, I want to make it useful. Well, they're all useful, but um, make it a really cute one because that's, that's really fun. So um, make sure you enter bit.ly PTO giveaway. And then the second thing is go check out that presence planner and see how it will work for your group. And you can see that plus all my other fantastic products in my shop. And uh, um, you can get that at bit.ly PTO store. So um, I hope this has been super helpful for you. Um, next week, I will be back about one o'clock on Wednesday. So I hope you have a great week and I will see you then. Bye-bye.